Welcome. Welcome to CQFA. Bienvenue. Welcome. Welcome to CQFA. To CQFA. The human eye is a lazy organ that only wants to relax, to take it easy, such as it does when we sleep. The periods when we are awake and active represent efforts and work. The eye requires two incentives to see well. It needs our interest in the object or the scene we're looking at, and what the scientists call the textured horizontal gradient, also known as focus cues. Not surprising that sunsets attract so many people every night. First, our interest is obvious because the scene is beautiful and generally evokes good feelings. Then, right in front of us, the texture of the image offers what the eye needs to focus. In other words, to project its focal point as far as possible in front of us, up to optical infinity, which corresponds to 10-20 meters in front of us. The details, the terrain, in this case the rocks on the ground, traces of vehicles provide the eye with what it needs for, if we can say so, to hold on, to throw the focal point in the distance. Without the interest in the scene in front of our eye and without the textured horizontal gradient, the focal distance will naturally shrink, reduce roughly to the natural distance that it adopts when we sleep, so about one meter, more or less. Features are familiar with students, lost in their thoughts, miles away despite having their eyes wide open in the classroom. The students lacked interest, and interest is exactly what the eye requires to accommodate properly. At that moment, the teacher asks a question to pull the student out of his or her stare. In aviation, there's a phenomenon much more lethal than a boring teacher. The lack of contrast and details in outdoor scenes is particularly common in polar countries because the layer of snow or ice deprives the eye of the texture necessary to accommodate. The beautiful blue sky we see on this picture tends to interest the viewer, and the low sun, located on the right side of the screen, produces shade on the snow. But let's see with a less beautiful sky. A field covered with snow under a gray sky renders the eye accommodation far more difficult, although the shadows give us enough texture to accommodate at various distances. Imagine turning to the left so to have the sun behind us. Here, this is the same field covered with snow. It is the same visual scene, but this time the sun is behind us. It still produces shadows behind the snow hills, but hidden from our point of view. There is certainly a forest in the distance, visible in good weather, but today's weather is known as flat light. Aviation distinguishes between flat light condition and whiteout because each condition warrants a different navigational response. Whiteout primarily occurs over snow-covered areas, but it may happen in dust, sand, and over glassy water. Whiteout is caused by snow or fog engulfing the person in uniformly white glow, like evolving in a bowl of milk, losing all peripheral vision and the horizon. Perception of ground and sky becomes indistinct. Whiteout may also be self-induced, meaning the maneuvering of ground equipment, lifting snow to surround the operator. Flat light, on the other hand, is more difficult to define. It poses the same level of threat, but far more insidious because it will still offer common visual cues such as the horizon and the ground, Its danger lies in preventing the human eye to evaluate distances. Five feet over the obstacle or 500 feet look the same under the flat light condition. During both optical conditions, the human eye is unable to accommodate, thus the term empty field myopia.
The human brain is more apt to be wary of empty field myopia and the presence of snowfall, storms, or even blizzards. The absence of airborne snowflakes or dust particles or fog takes more work from the brain to decode the visual information. The phenomenon known as cognitive ease then takes over the control of the person's thoughts by suggesting that everything will be easy and that there will be no reason to be suspicious. It is crucial to remember that empty field myopia occurs insidiously when you least expect it, even when facing the sun in a contrast-free environment. It affects us when we cease to be wary of it. The vast majority of people interviewed after an accident in one of the two optical conditions will tell investigators that they thought they were still very far from obstacles. After a sea fit, pilots will report they could swear they were several hundred feet from the snow-covered surface at the time of the impact. Countless accidents occurred in Canada in these conditions, sometimes involving large airliners. The loss of visual textures causes the human eye to rest, adopting a neutral focal distance known as the dark focus point. It's where the eye accommodates when we sleep. This more or less corresponds to the natural curvature of our cornea with the radial muscles around the lens at rest. Empty field myopia distorts the captured image, namely by reducing the size of the objects we see if there are any. It takes away spatial references and therefore the notion of distance. It's easy to experiment it without risking your life. Simply position yourself in front of a smooth, light-colored wall that is diffusely lit. Place yourself as shown so as not to have the floor in your field of view. Bathe all your sight of the whiteness of the wall and suddenly you should lose the sense of distance between you and the wall. Your proprioception receptors will no longer validate what your eyes are telling you. Some people are much more sensitive than average to empty field myopia. Public space architects and designers are aware of this and try to texturize the environment to prevent people from losing their footing, falling, or being bothered by a sudden and unexplained feeling of vertigo. Natural materials that humans appreciate, such as wood, slate, and aggregates that recall the seaside, have a naturally reassuring geo-referencing effect. Let's go back outside in the flat light. Operating any vehicle here, airborne or underground, is extremely risky. The challenge is to know where we are and figure where we're going without interruption in spite of the total absence of visual texture. Even when standing both feet on the ground, the loss of visual references makes it impossible to know without doubt our position or the position of the object we're looking at, or if it's moving towards us or away from us. The effect of empty field myopia is dreadful and simply a consequence of the human eye biology. Look at this scene in front of us. It is impossible to determine the size of this field, but turn your head to the right slightly. Here, suddenly, the eye is capable to project its focal distance way ahead of the viewer. The dimensions are now clear and the brain is able to build an image that makes sense. The eye loves visual texture, contrast and details and comes out of its relaxation when they are available. Have you ever watched downhill ski competitions on TV? Did you notice the evergreen branches dropped all over the course and even the use of dye on the snow? Look at the sky over this competition. A gray sky, a blanket of snow, all the ingredients of a very dangerous situation, often fatal. Now you know that the challenge is to provide skiers with sufficient texture to allow them to establish unequivocally and rather quickly their spatial position and rate of change. In whiteout conditions or lack of texture or during a pitch dark night, to avoid empty field myopia, look for details, shadows, colors. If necessary, place marks or contrasting objects in visible locations and try not to turn your back to the sun. Beware of contrasted visual cues that can suddenly disappear depending on weather condition or your vector in space.
Don't turn your back on the sun and, if necessary, use high-contrast visual cues. Empty field myopia strikes pilots in flight operations as much as ground personnel. It is recommended to establish some reference points which will have little probability to disappear during the operation. Don't continue the planned mission when only one visual reference remains. Experience plays a big role in conditions of loss of visual references. Develop the discipline to self-impose strict personal limits and adhere to them. Plan the exit door in advance and don't change it. The closer the human gets to the goal, the less inclined he is to cancel his plan. Here, too, experience plays a big role in maintaining personal discipline. Don't adapt to conditions as the mission unfolds. Trust your plan. Accept the limits you have imposed on yourself. In flight, when converging to a destination under a downward, slopey ceiling, the tendency is to follow the ceiling in a gradual descent. The countermeasure against this threat is, before taking off, to set a minimum safe altitude for the day's operation and to maintain it, even if visually everything seems okay.